airport? Not on my age, they don't, Mum. Oh. I want to stop worrying about everything too, will you? The house is securely locked up, the cat is reluctantly off to the cattery. And while you and Dad both enjoy a romantic week's stay in Paris, me and the rest of my unfortunate classmates will be on a delightful field trip with a school. Which is just my rotten luck, eh? Oh. So if you'll just release me from what I hope is a final hug, Liam's mum's waiting to take me to catch a school minibus. Discover to my horror, the school minibus contains my least favourite teacher. So you're coming too, are you, Dean? Yes, Miss Fielding. Pity. Already I start to feel a, how can I put it, a sort of sense of foreboding. A week under canvas with Fatty Fielding, grim prospect. But there's no escape now. Anyway, eventually I arrive at our campsite. And what a disappointment too that was. Naturally been hoping for somewhere a bit lively, because I'm a fun sort of dude, like. But oh no. Our campsite, if you can call it that, apparently consists of a, a field divided by a little stream in the middle. In the little stream at the moment, there are cows with raised towels doing something unmentionable. Heart sinks to my brand new, already blistering boots. Miss Fielding, you've brought us to a bog. It's a marsh, Dean. It's even got steam coming off it. Well, I'm sure we'll find a dry bit close by. And that's just marsh mist you can see, Dean. Of course there are no dry bits close by. Listen. Squelch, squelch. Marshes don't have dry bits, Miss Fielding. Miss Fielding then asked if I was intent on being a blinking nuisance throughout the entire field trip as usual. And then warned me to behave or else. Or else, apparently meant, that I'd be sharing a tent with Fatty. Since a teacher of her sides needs a tent to herself, I resolved to behave. Then we have our tents to sort out. Oh, joy. My best friend Liam and I now wrecked our tent on a bog. It's true. A tent apparently designed for either pygmies or three-year-olds. I discover we'll be sharing a sleeping bag with loads of things with eight legs. Oh, I vow never to go camping ever again. 11 o'clock. I'm still awake. I'm wondering if a cow will bump into us in the night and flatten me. Midnight. By my luminous watch. I reckon even being in a cattery with the cat must be better than this. And then at 2.03 precisely, Liam Morgan wakes up with cramp in one of his sweaty feet. Ow! Ow! End of sleep for the night. Ow! Ow! Suggest as there's no way Liam can stretch out his foot properly inside our minuscule tent, that Liam hop outside and sort his rotten cramp out. As Liam's afraid of the dark, I volunteer to accompany him, because that's the sort of nice dude I am. Liam says he doesn't like it outside, says your mask gives him what he calls the heebie-jeebies. So back to our tent he hops. Funny being out here on my own. So that's why there was just me, out here that night. Which is why no one else saw the spaceship. But before I go into it like in detail, I just have to take my word for it. OK. School field trip. Day two. First of good news, I've escaped from the campsite. Now, the bad. I'm a great Marshwick. Police station. I've got a Dean Batty outside, Sarge. Yeah? Claims to have had a close encounter last night. Oh, <laughs> no. Close encounter, my Aunt Fanny. Also with him is Dean's teacher and Mrs Fielding. Mm. He's just dreamed this cock and bull story up, officer, to try and get out to camping with me. Uh, if you wouldn't mind waiting outside, please, Mrs Fielding. <sighs> I'd like to talk to Dean on his own. <sighs> so, I take it you are the Dean Mark Batty? Yes. About whom a call was made to us earlier? Yes. Apparently you wish to report something that happened to you last night, while you were out on the marsh. You a detective? No, Dean. I am the station sergeant. 
This being a small country police station, it is manned by myself, my colleague Christine, and a very nice lady who hoovers the reception area and makes the tea. This is not New Scotland Yard, Dean, nor an episode of The Bill you've decided to star in. I'm not interested in time wasters who turn up and want to tell me tall stories just for a laugh. So if that's what you're here for, you can get up and go now and we'll say no more about it, Dean. However, if you really have something to report, young man, then stay and I'll... What, take a... Statement. Had this feeling right away like that we were going to be good friends. Not... So, Dean, after your little mate hopped back to his tent, for some reason you decided to stay out on the marsh, right? Well, not exactly. I was just intrigued by the mist. But you'd not been to a marsh area before. Also, by this time, it had changed. Changed? It was no longer a murky grey like it had been. Now suddenly it was becoming a sort of golden colour. It is known as swamp mist in these parts. So, Dean, you're out on the marsh. And then what? Well, I saw... I saw this sort of light. Torch. That's what I thought it was at first. I thought it was Liam flashing me the way back, to our tent. But then as my eyes got used to the mist, I could see it was a hurricane lamp. A hurricane lamp? Then I heard this sound of hammering too. Really? Like the bashing in of metal tent pegs. Then the hammering suddenly stopped. And why was that? Well, because the person doing the hammering had just hit his thumb. Ow! Mm. Flipping hurt, that. Jolly well did. By now, I could see it was a bloke trying to pitch a tent. Uh, So let me get this right. In the middle of the night, Dean, you suddenly encounter some strange man on the marshes. Yeah. And you didn't think it was slightly odd he was there? Well, no, not really. Why not? Well, because earlier that day, when we were leaving the school car park, Dippy... Dippy? Dippy Power, our headmaster, said another responsible adult would be joining us later. It's the rules. What rules? If a school trip's mixed boys and girls, you have to have a female in charge of the girls, which was fatty. Fatty? Well, Miss Fielding. But you also have to have a bloke as well, in charge of the boys too. Uh, So for that reason you thought that this person was him? Well, naturally. Especially since he seemed to know all about us. Well, I'm blown, eh? Swipe me. One of Dippy Powell's lads, eh, I take it? And here's me thinking I'm the only mad herb that's out there this time of night. (laughs) Billingham's the name, lad. Dean Batty. And as you can see, I'm in a bit of a two and eight here with me guy ropes. Not easy putting up a tent in the pitch black, I can tell you. Especially not with old Will of the Wisp about. Will of the Wisp? Yeah, that's what locals calls it. When swamp mist suddenly appears thick and golden, locals say that's when magic stuff happens hereabouts. Oh, yes. I didn't believe him, of course. But while the man Billingham finished hammering in his tent pegs, he said I'd find his billy can and a little camping stove in his rucksack. We could... Have a cup of something hot. Then he added... Warm up the old cockles a bit, eh? So, in the middle of the night, you're telling me that you are both now wide awake and drinking... Tea. With this stranger. (sighs) Only strange thing about him was his gear. It was all old-fashioned, musty and mildewy. Like it was donkey's years old. But you still reckon this was the responsible adult your headmaster had said he'd send to look after you? Of course. I mean, at that time of night, wouldn't you? Headmaster. Yes? uh, Your pupil, Dean Batty, has told me, and I quote, that when your school field trip left the school car park, you told them a responsible adult male would be joining them. Later. Yes, uh, Mr Jolly, our PE teacher, had been earmarked. (laughs) Mm. Uh, But Mrs Jolly wanted him to spend half term putting up shelves or something, which, of course, left me stumped. (laughs) So then I told my wife, Mavis, that I really had no choice in the matter. Then to do what? Well, then, to later that evening, be the responsible adult male myself, of course. Uh, So you never contacted a Mr Billingham at all, then? Who? No. And you yourself subsequently then arrived at the campsite at what time? Oh, I don't know, about 1.30, 2-ish. That's awfully late. Yes, it was, but sadly I'm afraid unavoidable. And uh, when you got to the campsite? It looked quite pretty, actually. It was covered in that... Goldeny sort of swamp mist, all the 
Willow the Wispy, it was. Uh, and then you did what? Pitched a tent? Me? Lord, no. Slept the night in my camper. And you've definitely no knowledge of this Billingham chap the Batty Boy claims was there at your behest. Uh, none at all, Sergeant. No. OK, Dean, before we go any further, as you probably know, I've now had a chance to talk to your headmaster. And? I think at this point you might like to hear what Mr Powell said to me. About what? About your Mr Billingham, for starters. You see, according to... Dippy Powell. Your head teacher, the only responsible male on the campsite that night was him, in his camper van. No one called Mr Billingham was contacted, sought or booked to turn up. That can't be true. So how, Dean, could someone turn up in the night unbidden, claiming to be an emissary of your headmaster without your headmaster's prior knowledge? Look, I don't know, right? Unless, of course, he was, along with everything else you've told me so far, a figment of your imagination, Dean. Look, I know what I saw. Billingham was definitely there, right? Dean, when your headmaster drove his camper van into the Marsh's car park that night, the only other vehicle there, he tells us, was your school minibus. So? So, how did your Mr Billingham get there, eh? Did he just materialise out of the blue? I don't know. Dean, the man arrives with a tent, a rucksack, hammer, all the gubbins. He'd have needed some sort of transport now, wouldn't he? Unless he was... Beamed down by Scotty, of course. So, Dean, you and your new pal are now drinking tea on the marsh, waiting for Will-o'-the-Wisp to provide you both with something magical, when suddenly one of you spots a spaceship, apparition, thingy. Is that what's supposed to happen next, eh? Not exactly, no. At first we just chatted, as you do. That was when he said... You see that house? Over there, lad. What house? There ain't no houses round here, mister. No, that's just where you're wrong. There's just the one. See? Over there. Great Marshwick Manor, it's called. Now we mentioned it, I could vaguely see chimney pots. And guess who lives there? No idea. Mr and Mrs Marsh Monster. <laughs> Get away. You are a card lad. No, 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 that chappy, what's his name, you know. Dead sort of famous he is. So all of a sudden, right, you're intrigued, wondering whose house this is. Am I right, Dean? Well, I might have been intrigued if you said it belonged to Aces or perhaps a Spice Girl. But when he said it belonged to some MP, I just thought, well, boring, as you do at my age. So, Billingham told you the house belonged to... Adrian Knight, MP. And then you suddenly, Dean, spotted a spaceship. No, but Mr Billingham did. Well, I'll be... What do you reckon that is, lad, over there? Airship of some sort? I looked up to where he was pointing. Naturally, I was gobsmacked at first. I couldn't even speak for a bit. Eventually, I managed to say something like, Looks more like a spaceship to me, Mr Billingham. That made him giggle. <laughs> Get away. Next thing you'll be telling me is that it's got Dan Dare on board. Who? Dan Dare. Eagle comic. Don't tell me you don't read that. Then I told him the Eagle comic hadn't been published in years. He went all quiet and looked sad. and said he was sorry to hear that, but he'd been away quite a while. But back to the spaceship, Dean. It was hovering above Mr Knight's home above Great Marshwick Manor. And by now, of course, Mr Billingham, like me, was keen to... Have a closer deco. So naturally, we legged it over there. It was already waiting outside. Who was? Night. Like it was pre-arranged. Like he'd been expecting it. And then what happened? A load of little grey men get off, did they, Dean? No. Look, do you want to hear what happened or not? So, you and your new chum, Billingham, are by now... Creeping into the grounds of Mr Knight's house. I told Mr Billingham to shh. Mum's the word. Understood that. We hid ourselves in the shadows. And the craft itself, Dean? Was dome-shaped, with lots of lights. And then Adrian Knight MP did precisely what, Dean? Headed for it, of course. 
But how could you be sure the man was Adrian Knight, MP Dean? You only had this person Billingham's word for it. Wrong. He presented the prizes at one of our school speech days, so I definitely knew it was him. And how did Mr Knight enter the spaceship itself? He seemed to sort of rise up a bit off the ground. Not very far, just a few inches. And then slowly, like a statue, really. He headed for the silver slit entrance. So he was teleported aboard. And how long did Adrian Knight MP allegedly spend on the uh, spaceship, Dean? Minutes? Hours? No idea. But you had your luminous watch with you. But he had sort of, well, blanked out. Often happens when UFOs are reportedly around, Sarge. Is that right, Christine? That's why I don't know. Can't say exactly how long I... Well, we were there. Nevertheless, a highly respected British MP, you are saying, has now gone on board a spaceship. Yes. And why would he want to board a spaceship, eh, Dean? To give the aliens the football results? To pass on... secrets of government. Classified information. So you're saying Adrian Knight is what? Some sort of alien spy? I don't know. Summit along them lines. Oh, I see. And what happened then, Dean? He simply came out again. Just like that? Just like that, yes. And did he see you and Billingham? I thought he had at first. But no, I don't think so. And then what did Adrian Knight MP do? Just... walked back inside his house again. And then his spaceship masters did what? Flew off? No. The spaceship's entrance remained open. That was when Mr Billingham said... Well, if an old Alger father can go on board that thing and come out safe again, then perhaps so can we too. Hey, lad? That's when this sort of music struck up. Music? And Mr Billingham said... Well, blow me. It didn't only my favourite tune. Me and my wife, Millie, used to... <laughs> love to dance to this one. That's when I saw this tear run down his cheek. He's remembering happier times long ago. And with that, this Mr Billingham person then left you? Yes. And with a whoosh, was teleported to? It was almost as if the music had been specially chosen to entice him. And what music turns aliens on, Dean? Catatonia's Mulder and Scully? No, Sergeant Andrews. Glenn Miller's Moonlight Serenade. <laughs> Dear. Well, of course... Being in the middle of the night, very apt. So possibly Glenn Miller and his entire blooming orchestra were on board as well, were they? Hey, Dean? How should I know? And how would someone your age know what Moonlight Serenade even sounds like? My mum's old grand's got all the Glenn Miller records. Oh, really? Now there's a coincidence, Dean. think of it, Glenn Miller did disappear under mysterious circumstances too, Sarge. It was wartime, Christine. Lots of people vanished then. But he was on a plane that simply disappeared over the English Channel one night. And his body was never, ever found. I think we're getting a little sidetracked here, Christine. And there have been allegations for years that he could have been... Uh... Well, abducted by aliens. I take it you'll be mentioning this just as a point of historic interest to Dean at some point, will you, Christine? Not if you don't wish me to, Sarge. Interview with Dean Mark Batty resumes. Also present is teacher <laughs> Mrs Fielding. Also present, as always, my colleague... Christine. <clears throat> so, Dean, two people have now gone aboard this spaceship. Apparition, thingy, whatever... Yes. And what about you, Dean? Me? Well, don't tell me you weren't tempted to follow Mr Billingham. Well, of course I was. But then again, no, I wasn't. I mean, I might have, if Liam had been with me too. But not on my own. It's too scary. No. And while Mr Billingham was on board, Mr Miller and his jolly bandsmen simply played on, did they, Dean? No. Everything had become... There was total silence from the moment Mr Billingham went aboard. And then what happened? Without any warning, the spaceship then took off. Mr Billingham still aboard it. That was when I realised that I must have been standing there for ages. Why? Because my pyjamas were all wet and damp. 
My football boot slippers were all covered in... all squirt. And did anything else happen, Dean, or is that the lot? Dean is shaking his head here. That was when he reappeared again. Who did? Billingham? No, Mr Knight. Well, from his home, from Great Marshwick Manor. Yes, he was all lit up by them what's it? Security lights? That's them. Don't prompt him, Christine. This time, though, he saw me. Oh, dear. And said what exactly? Oi, boy in pyjamas, why are you here, eh, trespassing? No, he just fixed me with this really horrible glare that was sort of, well, I don't know. Mesmerising? Christine. Like he was telling me in no uncertain words to... Leave his property forthwith. But no words came from his mouth. It was almost like... What? Telepathy? Christine, I won't tell you again. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarge. That was when I heard... <gasps> what? A loud sort of dog bark. And then... Then I just woke up in my tent. Mr Knight, thank you for coming in. Not at all. I believe I can be of some assistance to you in some respect. Uh, yes, uh, purely for the record, sir, it's undoubtedly something and nothing. It's uh, just that someone, a boy, has made a statement about you, sir, oh. so unbelievably fantastic that it needs clearing up. Far away. Uh, this Saturday night, sir, just gone, sir? Yes. Uh, where were you? Uh, dining with friends. Uh, returning when? Around... Um... Midnight. I drove home across the marsh. Well, it is the only way home. Yes. See any sort of lights, did you, sir? What sort of lights? Sky sort of light. Aircraft? Shooting star? More uh, <coughs> UFO sort of light, sir. <laughs> you are joking. <laughs> well, I, to I told you the allegation was uh, far-fetched, but uh, please bear with me a moment, sir. <coughs> Is there a Mrs. Knight at all, sir? There is not. I live... Uh, I work best alone, I find, officer. So, were you uh, alone in your house that night? Yes, my housekeeper doesn't work uh, weekend. Uh, and now, um... Please don't laugh, <laughs> but uh, that night at about 2.30ish, uh, say, a.m., uh, approximately, did you, um... Or did you not, uh... Board a spaceship. <laughs> that um, hovered above your uh, property. I can, I can hardly reply for laughing. As I see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me some wag suggested to you. That, that, that you, you might be in uh, contact with aliens or, or um, perhaps even... Be an alien, or, or, or if not uh, precisely an alien, then uh, uh, very possibly in some sort of... Um, alien thrall. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I suppose some of my colleagues have been dubbed a lot worse. <laughs> John Redwood, Mr Spock, for example. <laughs> Peter Mandelson, the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> so now I'm on the list too. Is, is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> well, theoretically speaking, you agree that... Uh, you were home in good time. That night, to climb aboard that spaceship. <laughs> Theoretically, yes, but obviously I didn't know. Mr Knight. Yes? Do you have a dog? I do indeed. Dean knew Knight had a dog. Oh, it was just a lucky guess, Christine. So have millions of us. And does it bark? And Of course it barks, my dear. It's a dog. So would it bark in the night, say, if something or someone were lurking outside? It barks as soon as the heat-sensitive outdoor lights come on. So you have special security lights, as Dean also mentioned. Of course. One has to be very security-conscious these days, especially in my line of work. So if anything untoward had happened outside, say, that night, your dog would presumably have barked its head off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Instead of which you heard no sound at all. I was soundly asleep from midnight on. Like I told you. Well, I think that's just about all. Thank you, sir. Jolly good. <clears throat> yes. Well, Christine? Didn't have time to tell you before night arrived, Sarge. Yeah? But been checking our log of calls, this one came in early Sunday. And? A complaint about a boy seen, and I quote here, in the early hours of the night trespassing. Oh. After saying this, the caller apparently just hung up like they thought better of reporting it after all. So what you're saying is it could have been night, eh, hey, Christine? Bit coincidental if it weren't. But any proof? Caller unfortunately withheld his number. But? 
If it was, it does back up Dean's story. So you think it might be worth having the kid in again? Only to see if he's more to add, Sarge. Oh dear, oh dear. School field trip then, day three. So, Dean, it's dawn the next day, and you're back in your tent after you allege having been spotted. And upon awakening, what's the first thing you do, Dean? Race outside, ring alarm bells, tell Mrs. Fielding here of your perilous night's adventures? No. No. And why was that, eh, Dean? You know, I think if I'd had a close encounter in the night, I'd have created one heck of a racket. But I put it to you. Perhaps the reason you did not was because when you woke up that morning, you weren't sure in your own mind if it had all been a dream. No, I knew it wasn't a dream. And when you crawled out of your tent that morning, did you perchance glance over in the direction where your Mr. Billingham's tent had been? Yes. And what did you see? There was nothing. Nothing. Not even the imprint of a ground sheet that had once been there. No. Not even a hurricane lamp. No. There was no trace of him, Dean. No. Possibly because he hadn't existed in the first place. Well, yes, he did. So when did you first mention the previous night's supposed events? Later on, after we got back from the fossil hunting with Dippy. Funny sort of a story, though, wasn't it? With no Mister Billingham around to back you up, eh? No evidence at all that your Mr. Billingham had even existed. So you were thrashing around a bit by this time, weren't you, Dean? No. And when you'd finally plucked up your courage and finally told your teacher, Mrs. Fielding, yes, what did she say, Dean? I said, would he like an aspirin, a lie down, an appointment with the doctor? A normal sort of reaction, in other words. And then when I told Fatty, uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Fielding and Dippy, about Mr. Billingham and the spaceship, and him disappearing into it and being taken off, and possibly then sliding through some sort of crack into a parallel universe... Yes? Well, that was when Dippy, well, Mr. Powell, suggested perhaps... Dean ought to see someone. And I suggested, well, the police. Dean, you do realise these are very serious allegations you are making? They're not just about any old someone. I know. But a veritable pillar of the establishment. Do you know he's been tipped as a future Prime Minister one day? No. Think how these silly, unsubstantiated allegations of yours, Dean, could completely ruin those chances. You just want me to say I made it all up, don't you? I'm not here to be messed around with, just here to get at the truth of the matter and nothing else, Dean. OK, Sarge. If he is making all this up... What do you mean, if? Then I mean, why do it? What's his motive? Well, does he have to have one? He's a kid who didn't want to go camping, so he makes some fantastic story up. About a government minister who he didn't even know lived out on the marsh until this Billingham person told him. Oh, don't tell me you're starting to believe him too, Christine. No, of course not, Sergeant. Day four of our school field trip and Sergeant Andrew's panda cars turned up at our campsite. Remind me again while we're here, Christine. Dean Batty's headmaster wants to see you again. Why? Apparently he has something to add to what he said to you before. Having mulled it over, I think now I should shed some light, even at the risk of sounding somewhat foolish. Uh, do go on. You see, there was a Billingham, once, uh, once upon a time, who always used to come with us, uh, camping. An old friend of mine. He was at a loose end, poor chap, having lost his wife, Millie. To uh, some sort of disease? No, to a double-glazing salesman. And uh, this Mr Billingham now, where is he? Long dead, I'm afraid. Motor car accident. Mm. Happened on these very marshes one night, in a part that hadn't been drained. <laughs> Poor Billingham. Was found upside down. <clears throat> Died in just two feet of water. His death was a mystery at the time, and furthermore remains so to this day. Apparently we haven't just got aliens out on the marsh that night with Dean Batty. Apparently, we've got ghosties now, too.
day five. Batty boy's here to see you again, Sarge. Well, tell him to wait. I'm busy. Doing what? Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Today's crossword. Well, what the... You wondered I... if he could shed more light on the ever more mysterious um... Mr Billingham, remember? Yes, yes. So, show him in, shall I, Sarge? <sighs> Dean, uh, this man you claim you encountered that night. Mr Billingham? Uh, yes. How would you describe him? I don't know. Bold and old. About your age, you'd be. So... So you could make him out clearly, could you, by the light of his hurricane lamp? Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you what may appear at first to be a funny sort of a question, Dean, right? Right, far away. This Mr Billingham of yours... Yeah? Well, was he... Was he, uh, in fact, um... Was he... Solid? <laughs> Solid. You know, I mean, is there any possibility, say, that uh, Mr. Billingham, uh, that he that he could have been, uh, well, uh, <clears throat> a ghost? I don't know. Never crossed my mind at the time. School field trip, day six. Hmm. <sighs> Never guess who's here again. Just tell Master Batty I am out, will you, Christine? I think you may want to see him. I won't. After you've read this, you will, Sarge. What? Banner headline today in the Great Marshwick News and Journal. What? Adrian Alien? Question mark. Apparently, Dean Batty wasn't the only one to see something strange that night, Sarge. Mr Knight to see you again. <clears throat> Mr Knight. Sergeant. Do sit down. Thank you. Now, I take it you've read today's press coverage? With amusement, yes, Sergeant. It says, and I quote, Riddle of UFO cited over House of MP recently. Yes. At least another eight witnesses apparently have now come forward and now claim to have seen it also. Including your star witness, the boy Batty who is most aptly named, if you don't mind me saying, Sergeant. Mr Knight, were you the person who made a call to this police station early last Sunday morning, claiming to have seen a boy trespassing? I, um, most certainly did not, Sergeant. And the previous night, again, I ask you, did a UFO land near your house? I've told you already. The allegation's preposterous. It's hardly worth commenting upon. Yet the News and Journal states you alerted spin doctors at your political headquarters, did you not, to warn them about these allegations? I did no such thing. And no one can prove that I did. Another witness, a lady driver, tells of a humming noise as she drove across the marsh. She then says she watched a craft come into sight and float towards, and I quote... Adrian Knight's Grade 2 listed farmhouse. It was shiny with a dome at one end and had bright lights. Just as Dean Batty too described it. <laughs> Other witnesses include two firemen on a shout. A journalist's even claiming you tried to get the news and journal not to print the story. At a bunkum. The sighting has now been clearly documented, sir, yet the Ministry of Defence claim that they have no record of it. Can you explain that at all? Sir? No. Some people are even suggesting there's a sort of men in black cover up. No. Is our government obsessed with hushing up UFO activity? Did aliens visit you that night, Mr. Knight? I've already told you they did not. Mr. Knight, a political colleague of yours has described you as having something of the night about you. Yes, they did once. What do you think they meant by that? Well, to be honest, at first I thought it was a compliment. A play on my name, right? White Knight. Shining armour, you know, that sort of stuff. But when the remark was picked up by the press, the press left the K off the night, did they not, sir? Yes. Implying there was something... How can I put it? Something shadowy, shady, sinister about you? Yes, and before you ask, I've no idea why. Would you say something of the night describes you at all, sir? Well, obviously I wouldn't. No. OK, so, well, I am tall, dark and... Saturnine? But I hardly think, young lady, I would have become the prominent person I am today if there was something wrong. A bit murky about me. But the Adrian Alien tag still stuck, and already I was dreaming of yet more banner headlines. Team Dean, hero of the hour. Schoolboy unmasks world's first alien. However, unfortunately for me, 
In the Great Marshwick News and Journal the next day, Dean Mark Batty's allegations about prominent MP were totally and truly scuppered. Alien alert now shown to be false, it read now. And Knight just couldn't wait to tell Sergeant Andrews, of course. A spectacular meteor shower, I see, has now been shown to be the cause of this week's supposed rash of UFO sightings. Read on. Many mistook the shooting stars for something of an extraterrestrial nature, whereas it merely signalled the return of a group of meteoroids known as... The Virginids. Which is why, and I quote, they are often mistaken for UFOs, as indeed happened in this case. Uh, Yes, of course, Mr Knight. What you have here is unassailable scientific fact. At last incontrovertible truth that there was never any spaceship around at all on the night in question. Of course, I I never thought there was, sir. Mm. No, you know that. Mm. Um, Still, uh, always nice, as I say, to have the perfect proof. Proof, which, as of right now, of course, contradicts entirely and irrefutably the ramblings of some mischievous (laughs) schoolboy. Yes, uh, of course, sir. Having said that, I don't think the boy meant any real harm, sir. Just a flight of fancy that got out of hand. So, Christine, tell Dean he's lucky just to be let off with a caution this time and never to darken our doors again or something along those lines. Mind you, well, even so, there there is one thing that still doesn't quite add up, you know, Sarge. Go on. Well, usually those who claim they've had a UFO or spaceship-type experience... Yeah? Well, it's always themselves they cast or imagine as the hero. What do you mean? I mean, they always claim it was them who were taken aboard the spaceship, never someone else, Sarge. And, well, it's just odd. I mean, if Dean did make it up, then why not make himself Dean the hero instead of inventing someone bald and old like you, Sarge? Yeah, well, uh, you... Like this Billingham bloke. <sighs> Final day of school field trip. Oh, no. Just popped in to say bye-bye, that's all, Sergeant. (sighs) Then learn the Dean Mark Batty file containing my supposed cock and ball story has now been put into a box called Load of Rubbish, for which they reckon it will never surface again. You see, Dean, to my way of thinking, there are two explanations of what happened to you that night. I know what happened, Sergeant. Uh, Firstly, either you were partially in the land of Nod, and the lights you saw were those of your headmaster's camper van headlights playing on, say, your tent fabric. No. That's one explanation, Dean. Or... Or... You were indeed awake and outside, as you claim, and saw the Virginids, Dean. But that's not true either. And then there's my own personal gut feeling about what happened. OK, go on. What's that? Well, you'd been at the airport, right? The day before. Hence your obsession with flying silver objects. You'd seen someone go aboard one, disappear and take off. Your parents to Paris, Dean. With me so far? Your sleep was fitful, to say the least. Oh... You've admitted all along you were less than enthusiastic about going camping in the first place. Perhaps you were missing your mum, your little home comforts. Doesn't this more realistically explain what possibly happened that night, eh, Dean? What about Billingham, eh? You'd been expecting an adult male, like you told me earlier. You mean I just dreamt it up? Did I know Dippy once had a mate the same name? No, I didn't. So what happened? Oh, was it Will-o'-the-Wisp, perhaps, weaving his magic? Or... Or... It could have been ley lines. You what? Explain. Ley lines are invisible lines of energy, Dean, that sort of crisscross the marshes, sort of waves beneath the ground that can induce psychological disturbance sometimes. At least that's what so-called New Age enthusiasts like Christine here claim. All I'm saying is you were in contact with the ground in your tent. Yeah, of course I was, yeah. Which is why suddenly I decided to conjure up a ghost, right? Why would I do that? Just to keep me company, eh? In other words, what you're saying is everything's got an explanation. What I am saying is that although you have convinced yourself that what you thought you saw was real at the time, Dean, with hindsight now you must realise it simply wasn't. Was it? And all the alien alert stuff? It's all discredited. Basically, it comes down to your word against nights. And there's no evidence, Dean. 
course, if you had the mysterious Mr Billingham here to back you up, then, uh... Funny, though, that he should appear on the marsh again, same date, same night, that Dippy told me he had his never-yet-explained accident. Maybe Billingham saw something inexplicable then, too. Maybe that's what's caused him to swerve and lose control. Pure conjecture on your part, of course. <laughs> Clutching at straws now, aren't you, Dean? So what it boils down to, what you're saying is that Knight's off the hook. Of course he is. File closed. Allegations proving to be unsubstantiated. You mean that lying git's been saved by the Virginia Bottomless, don't you? I think you mean the Virginids, Dean. So after spending practically all my school field trip here, it was finally goodbye, Great Marshwick Police Station. Time waster. Your parents are due back shortly from Paris, aren't they, Dean? Yes. Wonder what they'll make of all this. Marsh Airlines would like to announce that their flight from Paris has now landed. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, Dean? Mum, what have you been up to since we've been away? Oh, nothing much. Cat's glad to be back. <laughs> and your school trip, how was that? Uh, oh, more fun than I thought. I spent most of it in police custody. Dean! Or rather, helping them with their inquiries. Dean! Yes, I enjoyed it so much, I've asked Faye if I can go back next year, too. Oh, Dean. On account of I've got some unfinished business still to take care of. I've got a man I met on the marsh who may or may not be a ghost right to trace. What? When he returns to planet Earth again. His name, by the way, is Billingham. Oh, Billingham. I've also got an MP who says he's not an alien, but I know he is, to unmask. And next time I make dead sure that I do. There's, um, also a solicitor's letter waiting for you at home. Dean! Uh, he says, and I quote, Strongly advise your son to forget what he thinks he saw for the sake of everyone involved. While Adrian Alien himself, of course, remains safe and secure. Probably because a cover-up of the highest level has taken place, Mum. Oh, Dean! Yes. Everyone else is off Knight's case now, apart from me. Even the colleague who described Knight as having something of the night about him refuses to elaborate further. It's as if it's all been swept away and forgotten. But no way will it be, Mum. And do you know what else? No trace of the original Adrian Alien story remains on file. It's as if everyone wants to pretend the whole thing never existed. But I'm still out here, Adrian Knight MP. OK. And I know what I saw. Something of the Night was written by Jenny McDade. It starred Leonard Kirby as Dean Batty, John Chalice as Sergeant Andrews, Christine Kavanagh as Christine, John McCorkendale as Billingham, Geoffrey Whitehead as Adrian Knight, Stephen Thorne as the Headmaster, Jane Whittenshaw as Hattie Fielding and Mrs Batty. The director was Celia DeWolf. <laughs>